to be reckoned with. Can I take you a little? Can I get personal right along here? Because, because see, we have a youth program here on the narrow lane. And, and the purpose of that youth program is to help our young boys and our young girls grow up to be godly men and women. Now, obviously, you've had enough problems with the boys to make sure that they get here for the boys to men's ministry. These first two pews over my right hand side sit the candidates who are boys who are trained on how to be me. Have one of our young men sitting beside my wife in order to learn how to operate the camera so that he can film for the people of God. We're training them and you're doing a mighty good job getting them here. But when my wife and sister saw it, held a meeting for the young girl youth, only two showed up. Only two showed up. Only two. Do you think that that girl is immune from premarital pregnancy? Hello in here. Do you think she's immune from becoming a gang member? And when she becomes a gang member, she don't become a gang member like the boys become a gang member. They beat the boys in. But they got a whole different way to get her in. And if you think your daughter is immune from that, you got your head in the sand. You know what I'm saying? All we want to do is train them up in the nurture and admonition of the law so that your child doesn't sit down with you one day and say, Mama, Daddy, I need to inform you that I'm coming out of the closet. Amen. Mm. Come on in the room. You sitting here scratching your head and crying so you didn't even know that they was at the closet. I didn't my child get in the closet. And I didn't even know she was in there because you wasn't paying attention. When it was time for you to make the sacrifice. I know you're busy. I know you got to work. I know you got to provide for them food, shelter, and raiment. But baby, in this world, I would rather sleep with my child in a shelter to make sure that she knew the Lord than to put her in a big palace and have them on their way to hell. In Matthew chapter 2, even when one was born king, the plot was to destroy him. Beginning in verse number 16, then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wrong, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the young men. The enemy is trying to kill our children by execution. But then he's trying to kill them by getting us to neglect, to provide them with a spiritual education. Right. Neglecting to teach your child who God is and how to serve him is setting them up for the devil's disaster. Look at Judges chapter 2. And beginning at verse number 7. Let me show you what happens when you neglect to teach your child who God is. Let me show you a biblical account of what happened when some folk failed to pass down the principles that they had learned from generation to generation. Judges chapter 2 and beginning in verse number 7. The Bible says, And the people served the Lord all the days.
days of Joshua and all the days of the elders outlived Joshua, mm -hmm. who had seen all the great works of the Lord and that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being 110 years old. And they buried him in the board of his inheritance in Timnath Hills, in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill of Gaiash. And also all that generation was gathered unto their fathers. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Watch what the Bible says. Because these folk grew up not knowing the Lord. The Bible says that the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And they started serving Balaam. The Bible says, and they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which had brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed all the gods, the gods of the people that were round about them. And they bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. You want to make the Lord angry? All right, now. If you want to get the Lord all stirred up in wrath, neglect to teach that child who he is. And when he sees them walking a different pathway, uh -huh. when he sees them going astray, not because they knew but because you didn't take the time to teach them and show them better, the Lord becomes angry. I venture to say he's not just angry at the way with children. He's angry at the parents who allowed them to go astray. You can allow your child to go astray by neglecting to put in them what needs to be in them. How does a whole generation pass and nobody knows the Lord? I tell you, I'd be glad to tell you. Because on youth night, you let them go to the movies. Rather than come to the youth program. On the day that we're supposed to meet to teach them the principles about what God expects of them as godly children. How to respect you as parents. How to honor you as individuals who are over them and charged with keeping them. Instead of making them come here, you ask them, do y'all want to go to the youth meeting tonight? Come on in the road. You want to go there? You want to go over uh, Sarah's house? All right. They shouldn't have a choice. You, you don't give them a choice whether or not they want to go to school. I see they out next week, so you ain't you know you can be bothered with them. But come, we got the next. Get out. I mean, you you better not miss that bus. I mean, you better get out there and you bet you are not. You bet you bet not. You know what I'm saying? You make them. Go to school. Right. And bring an F home, you put them on punishment. Mm -hmm. At least y'all. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because that, 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 that's leading me to something else. We've got to stop rewarding bad behavior. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You've got to stop rewarding bad How does a child propose uh -huh. sit in a classroom yeah. for nine months and leave? That classroom with a grade that said he sat here and didn't learn nothing. Yes, sir. Come on in the room. Yes, and I know my child ain't no special child. Uh -huh. So you don't have no learning inability. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, I told you I volunteer every Friday at Blue Baker in the second grade classroom. Two reasons I do that. One of the reasons I love to spend time with that little yellow girl right there. <laughs> That's my baby. I love to spend time with her in school. But the second reason I'm in there is because I want her to get what I sent her there to get. Yeah. And I, I try to help her teach her. Her teacher is a good woman, but she's a young woman. And, and, and she just hasn't gotten to the point of really uh, being firm with these children. 